Hi, I'm Christy Linnae, and I'm going to give you your first lesson on the angle today. First, let's talk about the different parts of the head. This is the chordal side, pointed tip, and flat head for reference. In terms of holding the angle, you can think of it sort of like holding a pick. Um, bend your index finger and place the handle on the middle joint and your thumb resting on top. So you want the angle to be very loose in your hands so it can just bounce between your fingers. The more relaxed that your hands are, the more free and expressive you can be. In terms of your arm position, if you rest your arm on top of the guitar and just let the arm hang, you may also rest your pinky on the side for initial positioning. In terms of the motion that we want to get with the angle, um, you can think of it sort of like strumming, where you're rotating the wrist similar to turning a doorknob, pivoting on the center axis of your forearm. Again, you want it to be completely relaxed and free. So let's take this more exaggerated motion of rotating the wrist and minimize it to something very small. As you can see, I'm barely moving my hand. Very, very small motion to get a response from the string. Now we're going to break down this bounce technique. The good news is the consistency of your right hand can be developed through a series of rhythmic practices. The first technique is a single stroke, similar to drumming, and exactly what it says. So you're essentially playing a single stroke. And at first I would suggest trying this on the chordal side, which is the one I'm using now. When using this side, if you have the pointed tip up, I find this creates a little bit more balance. However, you can actually turn this any way that you'd like, depending on the feel and desired sound of each song. Earlier I mentioned that you can rest your pinky on the side for initial positioning of the angle. However, you don't want to depend on this for stabilization. The reason why is because you can actually be pretty limited with your hand resting like this the whole time and it could create a little bit of tension. So rather than doing this the whole time, let's think of the pinky resting as simply a way to get your hand in position. Then when we're actually playing, we want to lift the hand so that you can get this feeling of gravity falling onto the string. Therefore, the only motion you're actually doing is the lift and then falling. Really, both techniques with the hand up and pinky resting are just two different approaches. Well, let's practice something together now so that we can get this feeling of really, really relaxed hand, which is what I feel to be the basis for any musician is just to be completely relaxed so you can express yourself. So let's start with a relaxed shoulder, elbow resting here, and just practice letting your arm completely fall so you're not having any tension. Your hand is just hanging here. And if, if you're holding the angle the way we talked about it earlier, you will find that the angle will actually just sit in between your hands you don't even have to hold it there. It'll just rest because of the way the angle is structured. It'll rest right there. You don't even have to hold it. So you can always come back to this feeling. Anytime you start to feel tension in your hand, relax the shoulder, place the elbow, and just let your arm hang again so you can get this real true feeling of relaxation. Now that we're completely relaxed, let's try using the single stroke technique on individual strings using the flat head. You can try this with different arpeggio patterns, meaning playing the individual notes of a chord in a sequence rather than playing all strings simultaneously. So I'm going to start with the simplest arpeggio pattern, meaning going low to the high string and back to the low, which would sound like this.
that would be the simplest type of arpeggio pattern just there on this uh, E major 9 chord I was playing. However, as musicians and people who are you know, really starting to develop a technique with this angle, we want to try to do something fresh and exciting. So even starting with the simplest technique, let's think about, well, how can we do something creative with it? How can we make something new? Well, how about taking something that already exists, which is the single stroke technique that we're talking about, and the concept of using an arpeggio, and let's mix up the pattern. It doesn't even have to be complete successive notes all the time. It could be some rest in there and try to create a cool riff. So this uh, little segment that I played at the beginning is um, a tune, Sweet Lullaby, from my upcoming instrumental album. And the funny thing is, is that when I wrote that, it wasn't actually supposed to be in a moment of composing a piece. It was the feeling of taking the single stroke technique and trying to come up with some different patterns and ended up writing a song out of it. And that happens often with technique practice. So I'd suggest to any musician, as opposed to sitting there and feeling like you don't want to work on technique, you can think of it as something that's really fun and creative to do as you're applying the technique to something musical. So now let's try that. Um, I'm going to create a different pattern with the same chord and alternating strings. So we have... You could really do any type of pattern. Now when I was referring to rest, I was saying to take a pattern like that and try putting a rest in between it so you'd have So this concept can be applied to so many different elements of music. You can also work in things like dynamics. The idea with dynamics, if you notice, if I'm playing really soft, it's barely any motion with the right hand. So there again, you hardly have to do any work. So if you're in this position, gravity will do everything for you. All you have to do is relax and let the angle fall. So we can be expressive with dynamics, really soft notes, or louder notes where we're getting a little bit more of a stroke and we have a little bit more motion. So the single stroke technique is still the one technique that we're talking about here can really take you to a pretty high level in just itself with your angle playing. If you turn on a metronome, and speaking of metronome, if anybody has the excuse of, oh, well, I don't have a metronome, well, you can try, um, if you have an iPhone, um, just downloading an app for a metronome. It's really easy to do. So now that we have our metronome app on our phones, um, this is the one I use. It's Steinway and Sons, but really, you could use any one that you'd like. Um, long as it keeps the beat, you're good. So now I'm going to try doing everything that we just talked about with single strokes and apply it to the metronome using a series of rhythmic patterns. So the first one, I have it at 120 beats per minute right now, you can even start slower, um, is a quarter note, so meaning playing on every beat. So we'd have... And you can do that for quite a while, going through different arpeggio patterns, even melodies and things that you would normally do. Try that and try working it up to a fast tempo. Next, uh, we could do eighth notes. We'll try that with the same tempo in eighth notes using um, playing on the downbeat, which would be 
what we were doing before, and then also playing on the upbeat, which is the middle of the beat that we call and. We'd have one and two and three and. There again, I was just playing the same exact pattern, now in eighth notes. And we want to take that one step further, let's try triplets. I'm going to turn the tempo down, just so it's not so super fast in this moment. Um, triplets, where we're playing three notes per beat. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Now we could take all the different subdivisions in the world and get insanely fast with it, ultimately. Uh, let's do one more together where we do uh, 16th notes. And when you're doing faster subdivisions, you can decrease the tempo of your metronome so that you're not completely increasing the speed. Now um, I'm going to do 16th notes, so we're playing just like on eighth notes, we have the down and the upbeat one and two and, and you can have two for each of those. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and or however you want to count it. Um, and try different patterns with that. So. So you can get a lot of mileage just out of taking those four different patterns. You can start to combine them and apply them to chord progressions and just see what you come up with. Again, you want to be really creative and try to take music to the next level with everything that you learn. And that is the best advice that I could give to any musician is try to do something original learn as many new techniques and theory and all of it but the most important thing is to find a creative way to apply it to music to express yourself so have fun and um, in the next lesson we're going to talk about double strokes so i will see you then thanks so much i'm christina